we're so focused on how big something needs to be or like the long term vision or all these other things that we fail to realize like it's one thing. It's mm. one action today. Right. It's one commitment. Like it's I, one thing that you're doing. That's it. I agree because uh, I watched. Uh, you ever seen Ed my last week? Mm -hmm. And he he talks about the power of yeah, one. Yeah, he has a book. Yeah, yeah. This, it's simple, but it's like so. You literally look at you your life. You go do one thing at a time, you know, and it builds up. Uh, like me, I'm always saying, win the day. Yeah. That's like my version of one. Yeah. You know, like let's just win the day, but one win, day at a time. But you, you know? also win one one thing at a time. Exactly. Right. So it's exactly. like you're winning, and like then you compound it, and now you're winning. Now you're winning the day. Mm-hmm. And that's right, what people don't won, think you of. You won multiple little baby times. Mm -hmm. Now you win the day. Now you win the week. Now you win the month. Now you win the years. Now you win your life. And that's the journey. Yo, yo, what's good? What's popping with y'all? It's your boy, Abram Mitchell. And y'all now tuned in to the Triple M Show, where you unlock the secrets of a money-making mindset. And y'all know every time you tune into this, stay focused. And y'all know my motto, take action. Action takers, money makers. At the end of the day, I want you, we're going to talk about a lot. We're going to always talk about a lot. That's why it's recorded, and that's why you can refer back to it and your notes. But at the same time, I want you to focus on one thing. I tell you all this every week. Take one piece of information and apply that as soon as possible, okay? At the end of the day, we go provide a lot of game. But if you just sit here and watch it, and then go on about your business and don't do anything, what value you really getting? So today, we got another amazing guest <laughs> by the name of Christina Aguilera. <laughs> the real one, huh? The real one, yes, for sure. Thanks <laughs> for you having feel? me. Thank you. How you feeling today? Good, great. Okay, okay. It's been, it's well, been, a, it's been a good last couple of days. Yeah, yeah. You you in town for Mastermind, right? Yeah. Okay. It's a, it's a group of guys. We just do it. A group mm -hmm. of guys and Christina. Okay. <laughs> um, we just meet Old up. guys. <laughs> Old guys. <laughs> Wiser, mm -hmm. more experienced, way more money than I have. Um, and we just get together. We meet two times a year mm -hmm. and just um, mastermind on different businesses, the different structures of things, how things are working and stuff. So, yeah. How long y'all been doing that for? Um, so I've been in for three years. Okay. Yeah. So like... Was it like them, and then you came on? Yeah, yeah. I mean, okay. like people get we okay. have people get initiated every once in a gotcha. while. Gotcha. Um, but it's a really close group, so usually it's just like one person, um, mm -hmm. that's like friends with someone else, and then it's like, hey, I feel like they can really add value, or they have a different perspective, or they do something different that the group needs. Mm -hmm. um, and then do y'all like just pick a different location yeah. for every mastermind? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I mean, we love. We love Scottsdale. We like to do in okay. Scottsdale's, and then we like Who Nashville a lot. Scottsdale, yeah, Scottsdale we like doing Nashville and Scottsdale. Scottsdale, I'm not gonna say Nashville and Scottsdale is the same, but I could see why y'all like Scottsdale and Nashville, and Nashville yeah. because there's always a lot going on, and fe that's why I got the game from. Yeah, you know, all my mentors mm -hmm. they out there in Arizona, yeah. but uh, you know, you got what? What do I say? They got nightlife out there, yeah. Like Nashville, yeah, it's fun. When you come out it's here, walkable. it's just straight. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's straight. It's you, walkable. Old town, yeah. Okay. That's usually where we we we'll usually stay. I like the W. Okay. Um, and then you can like walk right. There I like the there. canopy out there. Okay. It's canopy. dope. Is that a restaurant or a hotel? Hotel. Oh, okay. It's a um, I think it's a Hilton. Mm, it like might. It's Hilton on Marriott. You know they own everything, yeah. but <laughs> it's 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 nice though. It's like in the middle of. I'm not going to say middle of nowhere, but mm -hmm. there's no other buildings surrounding oh, it. Nice. But it got a nice rooftop. And, you know, Arizona just got, like, the mountain drop back. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? So yeah. it's a dope spot. Every time I'm there, I make sure I stop at the canopy. It's beautiful. But, like, what's the main focus of the mastermind? Is it, like, a real estate, business, yeah. no, entrepreneurship? It's, real it's, uh, it's real estate investing focus. But there's, like, some people who coach. Um, there's there's just, like, different variation. Most mm -hmm. people have verticals. Okay. Of the business. So like one, you know, they have like skip tracing companies, education, mm -hmm. like there's still like a lot of different laterals that people are building off and kind of like you do, right? Like it's not mm -hmm. just, you're not a one trick pony. Okay. And you're not able to sustain that. If you are a one trick pony, mm -hmm. like there's just, there's, it doesn't allow for diversification. Yeah. When nah. things get. You have to diversify though. Like at the end of the day, I mean, it, business is in cycles. Yeah. My, I got in wholesaling. You see me fix and flip. You see me develop. 
Buy of rentals. course, the goal is to have rentals. <laughs> I don't have a lot. Of, I don't have as many as you <laughs> no, of those. Just, but it, it takes it's it's one at a time. Mm -hmm. I think we get so overwhelmed with like that's so far away. Yeah, that it's like I also just started with one, and then I bought another one, and then I bought another one. Like I didn't buy one apartment complex. I didn't mm -hmm. buy one thing. It was like every one, one, one. You know, it, and like the most I bought at a time, I think, was like ten. Okay. Yeah, so it wasn't really that many, and I was I was just doing a lot of one offs because I was going direct to seller. Well, consistency will win. <laughs> consistency always win. But I agree. Like when you look at that overall, it's like climbing a mountain. Yeah. You know, like I've talked to someone that's done it before, and they said, <laughs> to be honest, the only time I looked at the top was like before I did it. Like one time I looked at the top, but yeah. until like when I was actually doing it, I looked at one hand going yeah. to the next until I got there. You know, so it's the same thing with. You know, you might look at somebody with like you, yeah. couple hundred properties, and then somebody might look at that and be like, get paralysis by analysis and mm -hmm. never start. Versus, okay, let's buy one, one. a month, yeah. Then let's buy five a month, mm -hmm. then let's buy ten a month, and the the it'll compound pretty quickly. And that's like the proof of concept, though, right? Yeah. Like the first one is proof of concept, and then the mm -hmm. second one's like, the first one's like, oh, I can do this, mm -hmm. right? And then you gain a little bit more and more momentum and confidence in yourself, right? You're able to mm -hmm. pull the trigger faster because now you've done it so many times. Yeah. And you also develop a process in the place, right? So, like, the reason I was telling people, I'm like, the reason why I was able to buy so many houses was because it was, like, one spreadsheet. I used the same thing. Mm -hmm. I analyzed the same way. I looked at the same thing. <laughs> I'm like, it's just a, a different address. Yeah. It's just a different thing. But it's mm -hmm. like, if you can stay cons consistent in the process... And like build that out, it would just like you're, there's no variation. Yeah, it'll compound. Mm -hmm. You know, and you will learn better tricks and new things along the way. So I want to pull it all the way back. We didn't got a little ahead. <laughs> we talked about the mastermind. We talked about a couple <laughs> yeah. hundred properties, and some people probably looking at this like, Who is this okay, girl? you said Christina Aguilera and did two hundred <laughs> properties. So let's take it back to the yeah. beginning right now. Like, what? Tell us a little bit about your early life and what okay. ultimately led you into real estate investing. Yeah, so um, I come from a working All family. <laughs> no, I come from a working family. My mm -hmm. mom and my dad are still married. They love each other. They like each other. Mm -hmm. um, I'm said they like each other. I that, think that's like the key. That's important. Like right they there. might love each other, but mm -hmm. do they like each other, right? Mm -hmm. So they still like each other. Um, mm -hmm. I feel like you can love anyone, right? Mm -hmm. But you don't necessarily like them. So um, there's just been a lot, right? I come from a first generation. Um, I'm first generation American. My mom's Venezuelan. My dad's Cuban. Okay. And I grew up in Miami. So just like hustling, like, you know, the the bustle of like the grind, the Hispanic grind, like you're, you know, supposed to be really smart and like go to law school and mm -hmm. like be an immigration attorney. And like, even though no one told me that I had to do that, like subconsciously in my mind, like that's literally, that was like my purpose, my line drive. Um, my grandpa used to pour asphalt like my whole life. Okay. Um, I need to, I need to get with him. <laughs> I need to deal on some asphalt <laughs> <real>. right now. <laughs> so like he he poured and he because he ran his business so bad. Okay. Like just <laughs> so bad. I mean it was a hustle, right? And we're gonna I'm sure we're gonna dive deep into mm -hmm. that today. Like it was a hustle. So he's a Even, high paid hustler. A high paid. Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. He had a job, a high yeah. paying job. And deliverables and clients and like mm -hmm. more than just like getting into work, but it was always messy and chaotic. And my dad at a very early age, because he used to help my grandpa do asphalt and my grandpa wouldn't pay him. Like it was just like, well, I mean, thanks for coming, you know. Mm -hmm. So my was like, that when he was a kid? Like no, he was probably like 14, 15, 16. Okay. Like, I mean, I you're you're a kid, but trying like, to get free labor out of his kids. Yeah. That's what my dad dad did to me. So cause the same thing, like my parents, they was a they high paid hustlers, mm -hmm. self employed. Like yep. they don't work a job, but created a job for themselves. Right. And as a kid, I didn't mind, you know, getting in because it was just fascinating to me to be yeah, like to be in doing the environment. Something. Yeah, be in the environment. Yeah. So he saw that your dad wanted to be in the environment. He was yeah. like, all right, I'm gonna throw you in that water then. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so but it differ it deterred my dad so much from entrepreneurship. And that's okay. like one of the things, obviously, you and I don't have kids, but like little things that my dad has taught me yeah. over the years that his dad did like subconsciously, right? Okay. So you didn't pay him, right, mm -hmm. per se. Then you like, it's hard work. And then he sees that you guys are broke. Why would he want entrepreneurship for himself? 
And that's like a bad example. Yeah. So my dad ran as far away from entrepreneurship. He wanted consistency. He wanted consistency for Mm -hmm. his family to be able to provide for my mom, the kids, all this, you know, the vision in his head. So Mm -hmm. he went and like, I mean, he's built some really amazing, like small businesses. Okay. um, But it was always, (sighs) you know, he wasn't the owner. Right. Mm -hmm. He didn't want that risk. Yeah. He was just very good at being positioned properly. So how did that affect you coming up? You know? So it's really crazy. My brother and I are both entrepreneurs. Okay. <laughs> um, but my dad always like older brother or younger? He's younger. He's four oh, years younger. Okay. But like complete opposites. Like, you and him? Yeah. My brothers, okay. I mean, we have our makeup is the same, but the things that we do are different. So my brother's yeah. actually a cowboy. Um <laughs> <laughs> like belt buckle. No, nah, y'all like, definitely complete up. Like, 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 yeah. like, like belt buckle hat. Mm-hmm. Like he's actually this weekend, he has a road um a rodeo that he produces like it's his event okay. people pay the fees and it's yeah it's like a whole thing but he makes custom saddles for horses that's that his business sound like i mean i've never heard of somebody doing that <laughs> so it sounds like a niche a niche, niche that yeah. you could make a lot of money in you know what i mean, I mean? and people who are buying 20 30 thousand dollar horses like they're not gonna put a 500 dollar saddle on their horse well, like the saddles are like sound expensive for us <laughs> how much he charging for <laughs> For ten thousand, like they have like snake skin. They're like branded. Like you put your last name on it. Like it's yeah. Five thousand. I mean, I'm sure there's cheaper ones. I just the ones I know about are five thousand dollars. They're probably more than that. My sister in law sells I need turquoise to get jewelry. Get to the saddle business. <laughs> God damn. They, um, she sells like turquoise jewelry, which okay. is like Native American, like turquoise jewelry. Okay. And like she has to go on an Indian reservation. It's like this whole thing. Mm-hmm. And um, those pieces are like five hundred dollars, a thousand, three thousand dollars for like bracelets and necklaces. So y'all hustling. You, yeah. you come from a hustling family. I mean, yeah. Dad, even though he don't have yeah, his own business, too, yeah. still hustling. There, no, and that's the thing though. Like from mm-hmm. a very young age, like he, he was like he. Well, the reason why I said that was because my brother and I, he would always say like you, you are gonna be better than your mom and I. You okay. are gonna like from a very young age. It was always that. That's um, support important. Yeah, because I, people I, compete yeah. with their kids. Yeah. And my dad's like, how can you compete with someone that you want more for? Like, your kids are supposed to do better than you. But that's the thing. He, Everybody don't want more for their kids, mm-hmm. you know? That's weird. They me. might say that, you know? That's weird to me. But I, I feel like that's a, we got that in common. And, you know, I didn't know that uh, your parents still together. I, yeah. My parents been together my whole life, you what? know? And they still together. Yeah. Oh, uh, and they, they like each other. They look. Skeptical. Listen, we gonna get too deep into <laughs> yeah. it, but listen, I see the good, yeah. the bad, and the ugly, oh, and the great. Course. You feel me? Yeah. But having that that support, you know what I mean, is it go a long way. You know, having yeah. parents that sit down and tell you, you know, you gonna be better than me. Yeah. You know what I mean? And at the same time, you seeing them hustling and putting a plate. It, it, it on, matches the yeah. actions and the word match. Exactly. And I think that's where a, a lot of other parents might fail. And with my friends, you know, mm-hmm. was like, I'm telling you something, but I'm also, I'm not showing that to you. Mm-hmm. Right? Exactly. Cause like you tell right. me something, but you, I don't believe it. It's like running a business. You know, if you tell your people to do something, but you can't do it. Yeah. They're going to lose faith in you. If right? they fall on their face, then who's there to pick them up? You know, right. you gotta be a general. So yeah, your sure. parents, great generals for you and yeah. inspired you and your brother to, yeah. You know, and just hustle do, and work hard. do more, you know, be in a position to, like, my dad taught us about credit, you know, when we were mm-hmm. younger. Like, he just, he, I don't really, he didn't do a good job teaching, like, the whole concept mm-hmm. of it. But he did add us to a credit card, so we had a little bit of credit when, okay. we, you know, when we started. Like, little things like that, he was, he's always been, like, the responsible one with finances. Like, they're, you know, they've made really good strategic plays, um, but it wasn't always communicated, mm-hmm. right? Like, so he used to move. But, like, didn't really say, like, why. Now, obviously, at 30 years old, everything mm. makes sense. Like, mm. my brother and my dad and I have business conversations. It's like, you know, he's, he's talking to my to my brother now of, like, how to raise, you know, how to, like, the perspective, you know. Mm-hmm. And, like, my brother and I always say, you know, if we can do 10, 20% of what you've done for us, like, we're going to be the most amazing parents. Like, mm-hmm. they did, you know, they did the absolute most, mm-hmm. you know. That's good. So. Yeah. How did that? All right, so Miami is where you spent your Miami. early life. Yep. And of Dallas. course, you bounced around. Mm-hmm. We just talked all about that. Yeah. Miami, yeah, yeah. Dallas, mm-hmm. Orlando, working working yep. at Disney World. Yep. That. What What did you learn at Disney World? Because you said it didn't yeah. pay you a lot Custom, there. Customer experience. Okay, customer yeah. experience. Yeah, and like the the fact that 
anybody. Like people mm. think of Chick Fil A and stuff like that, but like Disney, I was in the operation. Like I know the training, the onboarding that had to happen. Mm -hmm. They could literally fill a room, get everybody caught up to speed, give them cliff notes, their KPI tracks, everything from the beginning, and like completely offboard. You can literally remove your entire staff, put them right back through. It's, and like it would the, the the customer experience would not be affected at all. I don't think you I don't think business owners learn how important that is until you get to people go they go get mad at me for saying this until you get past a million. Not nah, literally like I don't yeah. think people think about that stuff. There's a lot of people that own the business and yeah. they might make a couple hundred thousand this and that and they're yeah. good with that, but then you got people that you know get to that million mark and they're like I want to get to you know, I, Three. making a million Five. is like kind of scary. Like being at that point, because it's like, boom, you could be right back. Thousand. You're there, still you know? really close. So trying to get to that next level mm -hmm. requires, you know, some sort of level of what you was talking about. You know, being able to delegate a team correctly, train them, and scale your business. And you got to watch a company do it. Well, one of the companies that do it at the highest level. Yeah. So I, I can only imagine how you took that into your own business. So yeah. when did you ultimately start your own entrepreneur journey? So we're looking at nine years. Not? Yeah, nine years ago. So at 21? Mm, yeah. Okay, so at 21, you started your entrepreneur journey. Was it real estate or was it a different business before real estate? So um, I, was, I was 23. Um, okay. It was no. I'm, Sound like you said you was thirty just no, now. So I was thirty two. I'm thirty two. Okay, yeah, yeah, thirty two. Yeah. Gotcha, gotcha. So, um, I so I I've always been in like small business. So I worked in big big corporate, right? Liberty Mutual and Disney, who mm -hmm. both produce amazing teams. But I was in small business since the time I was sixteen. Um, mm -hmm. I used to work at small insurance agencies, which is okay. back to the hustler, right? Yeah. Like the the person that has you a job, they own it. Yeah. They, they're ten ninety nine. You're a, yeah, yeah, you're W-9, yeah. so you're an contr independent yeah. contractor. Correct. So you in sales. I saw that. <laughs> yeah, I saw, I saw, and then I built, um, I did everybody from day one to year five, I helped them manage, and this was like in St. Louis, I basically managed the territory of farmers insurance agents. Okay. So I use from farmers. There, yeah, from mm -hmm. there, I literally like jumped off the cliff. Like okay. I was like, um, I was 21. I had already graduated my MBA in entrepreneurship, and I'm like, this can't be life. Like, mm -hmm. this, this just can't be it. So I started searching. I went to, like, it's really quick. Oh, Execution. so you got your MBA. Yeah. So you it's graduated college. You went, took yeah. the master's route, mm -hmm. and you got the insurance job, and you yeah. was like, this ain't it. So I graduated high school when I was 16, 17, and, like, I had to just make decisions. Like, I was, like, a kid making decisions, and I'm like, all right, next, next, next. Mm -hmm. It was just like, I mean, and it the business journey followed the same path, right? It was next, 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 mm -hmm. next. And then you wake up one day and you're like, I didn't did all this. <laughs> yeah. Next. Mm -hmm. Okay. There's no next, mm -hmm. right? Like there's no, like what is next? Yeah. Um, Because you, you ultimately get to a destination, right? So you got to dial it back in. Yeah. And so I, yeah, I just saw a small business and I just jumped off of a cliff. I was like, I understand the concept of it. I, you know, no one in my family, like, there's been one time where my uncle tried to flip a house and he literally lost his complete literal butt. It was like, oh, wait, like, lost everything mm. from there. Um, that probably burnt him. He probably was like, I don't, yeah. don't want to mess with real estate. Yeah, and so that was the only example that I had. So real estate was not even on my thing. I, yeah. I didn't know what it was. Mm -hmm. But I went to a seminar, and they talked okay. about Forex, real estate, and something else. I was like, real estate. The only reason why mm. they got me was because for, like, it was like 397 or 297 was the ticket. It was Rich okay. Dad. Okay, gotcha. So, but they're like, you get a tablet. And I was like, bet. I mean, worst case scenario, I get a tablet. Like, yeah, I got <laughs> some. You giving me something, <laughs> something tangible, like, you know? Okay. So, and, I mean, now you think about it, it's like, psych like that's Back like sales Back then, $300 psychology. was a lot, though. Yeah, and I was like yeah. living paycheck to paycheck at that mm -hmm. point. And um, so then I go, and I go to the weekend seminar. Mm -hmm. And on that weekend, like I did no research. I was telling people, like I literally didn't Google. Like it was like I had one track mind. I was like, this is what I'm doing. Nothing is stepping in my way. Mm -hmm. I had credit cards, and I put a coaching program. I spent ninety thousand dollars on credit cards. I like went home that after the first day. I raised all my limits on all my cards. Da yeah. da da da. <laughs> what they said at that seminar that <laughs> well, made I don't you know, do but that. I was like this. <laughs> you know, because everybody got the story of I read Rich Dad Poor Dad. You said, nah, I went metal. Like, I <laughs> no, went to I wasn't, the seminar. Yeah, I mean, there was a well, guy that was there. Yeah. But, I went um, to the seminar. Like, And I was like this, like, 
bet this is it so they so had a good they just showed they numbers good. like yeah. it was like deals and i was like i could do that like mm-hmm. the person i felt like that person wasn't any smarter than i was like mm-hmm. like i'm just like oh he knows how to do a math equation like yeah. i can do that mm-hmm. like so he I, was like here you go here's how you do this here's how you get five thousand dollars put it over here from your credit card and i was like bro but now obviously now i know i'm like he was setting me up to raise my credit limit. Now I spend so much on coaching, I can't even buy a damn house. Yeah, I'm like, God damn, you raising your credit limit to buy the the, the program. All right, me and Carter, we looked at the uh, you know how you can look at uh Google like uh the frequency of words being searched. Yeah. So we looked at wholesaling. Mm. And from tw- in 2020, 2018, the 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 I don't remember the numbers, but you know the line graph, it was yeah. straight. 2021 straight through the roof so like 2014 2015 like the stuff they was talking about in those seminars was like taboo like yeah nobody knew it so it's like it wasn't as much competition yeah Yeah, it wasn't as much competition so they told me to do this so i pulled this foreclosure letter and i'm just like in the grind i'm like hustling i'm writing my own envelopes like this is before like you would Skip tracing wasn't a business. Yeah. Like, pulling a list. Like, yeah, skip tracing was, but you had to use, like, TLO or something like that, which was for bail bonds. Yeah, hard to get. Like, it wasn't like you could put a spreadsheet in. Like, PropStream, the OG PropStream. I've been on PropStream since the beginning of time, okay? It used to come on a CD. It wasn't a... Yeah, it wasn't like that. So, PropStream been around that long? Yeah, it used to be on a CD. (laughs) Oh, wow. I feel real. Bro, I was like... I feel real. I was like... I'm sorry. Ten, bro. I'm I'm 25 like now, so I was like 16. I was still thought I was going to NBA <laughs> in the NFL. I was still like, wasn't thinking about none yeah, of that. I you can't. know, that's crazy. Anyways, Pop Stream was on a disc, okay? <laughs> wow. I was today today years old. I thought Prop Stream came out in no, like 2019. No, that thing's been around forever. There was two vendors. Mm-hmm. It was Rich Dad. Rich Dad had it was PropStream and REI Black Book. Okay, I never I heard of it. It's a CRM. Okay, they're still around. Okay, got like you, got it's you. actually a great CRM. Oh, it's um, good. All yeah, right. but All it's right. crazy. It's crazy to like see how like mm-hmm. the evolution of everything. So, anyways, one track mind. I was just like, this is what they told me to do. This is what I'm gonna do, and I think this is where people fail. Right? Mm-hmm. It's like someone's telling you what to do. Just do what they're telling you. Exactly. Stop trying to reinvent it. They've done it. There's proof of concept. They know what they're doing. Just do that. And you invested it. You spent money on it. So yeah. Just and so I just like went like that. Ran. I pulled the list. I was door knocking in St. Louis by myself. No gun. This is before I knew that I probably should carry a gun. Yeah. <laughs> like way before that part. Was there a certain and experience just that that was like oh I got it? Like yeah, from door knocking. Was there a certain not, experience? Not not door knocking. Okay. It was from walking vacant houses. Okay. Yeah. All right. So first deal. All right. So you. You door invest knocking. into it, you start doing everything, you're door knocking, you're attacking foreclosures. Obviously, that's motivated people. Yep. What what was your first level of success? So I pull up to this house, it's like this beautiful house. Like, okay. and I'm like, oh, this is nice. Like, I'm mm-hmm. just like driving up, like, wow, this is really nice. It was an area I'd never been to before. Like, it's okay. like in the back and um by like Flores and Blackjack area. And um, so I get there and I'm like, all right, like I was just doing my routine. I had done it so many times. Mm-hmm. You know, like I was. And that's the thing, though. I didn't have the confidence the first time I did it, but I had the confidence by the time I got there, right? Mm-hmm. So I knock, whatever the guy answers. I'm like, hey, like, I know your house is in foreclosure. And he's like, yeah, it is, but I got a loan against my 401k. I should be getting that money in the next couple of days. And I was like, yeah. Mm-hmm. I didn't know you could do that. I didn't either. So there's, if you have a 401k, you can borrow a loan against that to save yourself. I've never yourself. had a 401k, yeah. so... But I didn't know you could do it. So I'm just here agreeing with this man with my confidence. Mm-hmm. And I was just like, oh, that's amazing. So you don't, you know, I don't need to buy the house. Like, you have a plan, mm-hmm. all this stuff, right? And he's like, yeah, but I do have this other house that I'd be willing to sell to you. And I was like, oh, okay, how much is it? And he's like, like $10,000. And I was like, okay, I'm from Miami. So, like, $10,000 yeah, $10, is $10, like, is cheap. If I could yeah. buy a house for $10,000, $30,000, $50,000, $100,000, I was like, and I was like, oh, okay, like, where is it? He gives me the address. I drive to the house. And I I mean, I got, I literally got it under contract within like a day from that. I drove back to his house after I went to go see it. It was, I mean, it was a vacant house. It needed a unit turn. Like mm-hmm. at that point, although I hadn't gotten a deal, I had walked a couple houses. Yeah. So I knew, like, I never had owned the house before that. Mm-hmm. Like ever. Like I've lived in apartments, my parents' house. Like that's it. So what? 
Did you like call up a contractor or something no, to like get a bid? I just walked it by myself and I took pictures. That's what they told me to do. And did you out under contract? Did you wholesale it? Did you yeah, buy I it? it? How much you make on that? Three thousand. Okay, that was like. But like a people shift told me. Though. Yeah, but people yeah. told me I wouldn't be able to sell it. When I started yeah. marketing it on Craigslist and stuff, everybody that called me was like, "You're not gonna be able to sell this." And you was like, "Bet." That's what <laughs> that's what I used to do. So yeah. Dispo was posting on Craigslist. Yeah. Now t- when I got into the game, Craigslist was still something that yeah. people was using. It, I mean, it, I, I wouldn't be surprised out. if they're yeah. still using it now, but mm-hmm. um, I mean, there's people that like older people go to Craigslist. Like to buy you stuff, have to yeah. meet your audience wherever they are. So yeah, I mean, Craigslist used to be popping. Like it used to be popping, but yeah. All right, so you sold that deal. You made mm-hmm. three thousand. And then I just did it again and just again. Just kept going and again. in because you got a you with you ninety k into the hole right now. Yeah. So, so I just kept on doing it. It was okay. it was enough, you know. Um, obviously, I had all these credit card bills, so like, mm-hmm. and at that point, um, were you working a job or you were like completely self-employed? I got laid off because I didn't pass my Series sixty six test, which is like to sell, like you know, to um, do okay. like stocks and like stuff like that. Um, so I didn't pass my test because I had already learned about real estate and I was just so engulfed in it. So I literally yeah. did. I'm like the best test taker, and like I failed this test. I literally flunked out. They wanted me so bad. They shipped me to like three training classes. I'm like, bro, I'm not reading that. You was like, I'm good on it. I don't care about yeah. this. Like, I didn't, this is I didn't not found interesting the play. to me. You like, I didn't found the yeah. play. So I was like, the time that I was supposed to be studying, I was really reading my real estate stuff. And mm-hmm. that's why I was like, all right, I get, I got unemployment for whatever time it was, six, seven, eight months. I ran it all the way to, as long as I could. Mm-hmm. I was making like $700 a month on unemployment. Like, it wasn't sustainable. Mm-hmm. So it was like the grind. It was a monkey on my back. I didn't have a choice. So what? All right, so you closed the first deal, and then now you all in with wholesaling real estate. Yeah, and I just kept on doing what it. What was the next step then? Because I know, because yeah. now you own yeah a couple hundred rentals. Yeah, I mean it started with wholesaling though. Like okay. wholesaling was the thing, and then I met buyers, and I was selling to buyers, and mm-hmm. then those buyers were out of state or out of the country. Okay. Then they started having issues, property management, contractors, all this stuff, and. They started tightening up, so they weren't buying as much. Mm-hmm. And when I noticed that, I was like, "All right, they're about to they're about to fuck up my money." Mm-hmm. Like yeah. I'm, I'm in you motion. You got to find right another now. play. Yeah, I'm in motion, right? So I'm like, "All right, how do I do this?" And then that's around the time like Max and I, he we had like just Max was just starting, I was just starting, okay. and he was like Max Tell- Maxwell, right? Yeah, Max Maxwell, right. yeah. And um, he was talking about like money, like basically borrowing money from people, like mm-hmm. the whole private money, private thing. money yeah. thing. Yeah. So I'm like, oh, maybe I can ask the out-of-state, out-of-country investor and just give them a smaller return and stay in the deal. Mm-hmm. And um, we had just talked about it. I just hadn't done it yet. Right? Mm-hmm. Like, it was just like something that came up. And then I just I just kept on doing it. And then I moved like my investors. I'm like, hey, like you could buy this. You're going to get 12%, 16% return, whatever it is. But if you don't have these things set up, like that might fail. You know? So what return were you giving your investors 6%. like? 5.56%. 5.5%. Mm-hmm. And they Long were... Long-term private money, 15 years. Okay, and were they... Perch- All right, give me an example deal that you pr- buy, presented buy to house. your investors. The analyzer that I use, um, I just used it when I was wholesaling it, and then basically I just structured the same exact thing. So I would analyze the deal, then I'm like, all right, this hits this percentage. I would present it to the private money investor. Like It would literally tell me, okay, you can cash flow 250 to $400 on this okay. house. And I'm like, all right, this is a play. I can pay the private money person, and I can do it. Mm-hmm. And then I would so just... So were they buying the deal, no bank money involved? Yeah, it was all cash. Okay, Everyone so they buying cash. it all cash. Yeah. All right, and you giving them a 5.5 to 6% yeah, return. Yeah, they're the bank. Yeah. Okay. So, like, I mean, interest rates right now are 8 At that point, when interest rates were 3%, mm-hmm. everybody thought I was crazy because I was paying my private money people 5.5%. Yeah. Now you can't even get a loan for 5.5%. No, you can't get one for under... Down eight. to 10. Yeah. Because <laughs> 8% if you got a 760 <laughs> credit score, you know what I mean? So, so it's like. So that was the thing, right? So that was the play. Um, mm-hmm. And so I just, I did that. And then I just, the, the thing that I always say is like, I just got really good at putting the details, figuring out what details I needed from the seller. Mm-hmm. What's the current rent or what's the potential rent? What are the taxes? I can look that up on the county assessor. Does your tenant pay bills here? Is that going to affect my cash flow? Like, I literally got so good at what is the data that I needed mm-hmm. so I could put it in my spreadsheet and make a decision. Mm-hmm. I and didn't want to be the one, like, doing a calculation, like, all yeah. that stuff. Like, it was, I'm putting it in there. You wanted to make there. it a system that, a process, basically. Yeah. I mean, that's how I did 300 houses in three years. If I didn't have that, I I, I don't I don't know what, I mean, it would it, you would literally be fatigued from making decisions. Because now it's like, 
I'm not really making the decision. The, the, the performer is. is. The spreadsheet is. And then you already have a system of sourcing these deals because you're going straight direct to sell it. Yeah. And property. So. And, but I built that all as relationships. Like that started from one wholesale deal. Mm -hmm. Then I started working with property managers. Property managers have properties that they're managing and people that are buying. So eventually they start letting you know like, yeah, because they mean, knew you were buying all these properties up in town. So acquisitions became easier because you built all these relationships with people. But I built the relationships first. Mm -hmm. I told people what my plan was. Yeah. And then they saw the action that my words and my actions were aligning with each other mm -hmm. and that they could count on me. Right. Like my biggest deals. Um, I had a business partner for a while. We did 120 deals in literally like a year and a half, two years. And that was all wholesale. We took down like a few houses. We turned mm -hmm. key some houses, but that's it. And it was all on Google spreadsheet. It was just that I got really good at what data we needed, mm -hmm. where it needed to go. And he would literally like do dispo mm -hmm. on, on the outside side. And I would do, you know, we would both do dispo, but it was yeah. like kind of, we had our separate buyers. So if it was his buyer, my buyer, it didn't matter. The company was making 50, you know, 50, 50, so mm -hmm. it didn't matter. But it was just a system. Like it was like, what data do I need? How am I making a decision? A quick, easy analyzer, and then just execution. So okay. how does that translate now? Because coming from the world, like without all this technology and a different market, and how does that translate like now into this market right now? Is it the same systems? Is it the same performers? Or you had to update all of that stuff? I mean, like, the only thing that's changing is your taxes are increasing. Okay. Your rents are going up. Mm -hmm. Right. Now, if you're wholesaling, right, you're adjusting it because the interest rate's a little higher, so your buyer's not going to be able to afford as much. Mm -hmm. But those exactly. are the only things that change. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's not... You're just updating the the, the way you're calculating the deal, mm -hmm. but don't give it to your acquisition person to make this decision. That's not fair to them. It's not fair to you. Like, what is what is the decision that you're trying to make, and what components do you need to make that decision? And then you put that in front of them. That's it. This is what we're looking for. So that's now it. they know exactly how to go find it. Yeah. So is that what led you to the SOP factor? Like, yeah. Because, I mean, now you're doing all these SOPs, helping people structure out yeah. their processes and their businesses. I mean, I'm assuming that all came from, you know, working. My own misery. Yeah, your own. <laughs> My own your own Your own problems, working in Disney, working in these other companies. Yeah. And then eventually you popped off another business from it. Yeah. And it came from your own business. So how that been? Um, it's been amazing. Mm -hmm. I feel like it's been um I've been able to save people that like I wish that I had someone to tell me these things when I was in the trenches. I built a property manager from a property management company from scratch. That is when I really realized that's usually the, value. the best way to do it though, when you got so many rentals because Yeah. I mean I feel like nobody's go Yeah, pay no one's attention gonna take to care it. of your stuff yeah. the same way. Uh but at the same time, like you have to realize, like what kind of what kind of lifestyle do you want, mm -hmm. right? Like, is that a lifestyle? I just didn't want to be involved in it anymore. Like, mm -hmm. so I actually I used to self manage. I self managed for four or five years. I just didn't like it. I didn't enjoy it. It didn't save me that much money mm -hmm. over time. It was more stress. time stress that I you didn't want to be involved. In. I mean, I can only imagine three. How when did you hit and that they're number all separate. of three hundred? Yeah, all single family properties, and they all in St. Louis, right? Yeah, but they when don't you hit share that a number? roof. They don't share a furnace. They don't share nothing. Um, so that portfolio, like the we counted it out three years ago. Okay. So yeah. So or two. Yeah, three years ago. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you hit three hundred three years ago. Mm -hmm. I mean, I would say that shit. Managing. When did you say? When did you make the decision that I need to build a property management company from scratch? To, so that we had three hundred. So it was at sixty. Units. Okay. Yeah, because I'm like I kept on having problems with my property manager. Mm -hmm. Like, well, the, the what happened was they told me, oh, the rehab's gonna be three five thousand, right? Mm -hmm. Well, they're getting money, right? They're getting my rents. The it was fifteen thousand, mm. which means they pulled ten grand out of my rent. And this is like, I'm that only can mess you up for a few years. That mess your cash flow up, I mean, literally for like two, three years. Bro, I never, like, I never realized, like, why people, like, I was, I, I love First 48. Mm -hmm. Like, that's my favorite TV show. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, dang, like, over a little cigarette, like, over this, over dumb stuff, they be killing each other, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I'm like, wow, like, he's going to jail for the rest of, like, that moment, $10,000 might have been my number. Mm -hmm. Like, I pulled up at these people's house. Like I was so mad. This was before I've been to therapy. Ten thousand dollars was my number. 
<laughs> no, because the property. And then the thing is, I'm like, like it was the disrespect. They the, pocketed some of that money. T- that's how they make money sometimes. They have to. You know? Like, 8% on rent doesn't cover. I ran it this business model. Mm-hmm. Unless you're charging, like, keeping late fees. Unless you're doing all these things, adding GC fees, maintenance in-house, there's no way you're there's making money. No way you're making no money. Way. So, boom, 10000 <laughs> Good thing you didn't no, do that. No, I didn't. So uh, I was just, you chose I just took, the, yeah. I, I took the high road and I took literally control. messed myself up for a couple of years. Yeah, I mean, mm. but it was, I didn't, I only knew three tenants named at that point. So I'm like literally became a property manager overnight. Wow. I have money that I could spend. Mm-hmm. So now you're messing me up because I can't buy anything else. Yeah. And so I kept on buying. It just became madness. So yeah, SOP Factory is literally my labor of love. It's my passion project. It's like mm. how I can, I don't know, give back, like give to people like the things that I wish that I had and how to properly document your business, right? Mm-hmm. It's always going to change. Your business is always going to break. Yes, we understand. But for the right now, we start building it so that it could be at least the foundation and then we can grow. The business is going to grow. It's going to evolve. It's going to continue to scale. But how are we getting the expectation that you have in your brain, right? Mm -hmm. And clearly communicating it so that people can support you and carry out the vision, Mm -hmm. right? So that looks like standard operating procedures, onboarding curriculum, and accountability, right? Like, how are we going to do our meeting structure? What data are we talking about at these meetings, right? So what KPIs are we talking about? And is there a system that easily gives this to us? Because anytime we make things hard, right? I've seen your, your, your podio build out. Like, anytime you make things hard, people are not going to do it. Yeah. Well, on your not. dashboard, you have the exact KPIs that you need to talk about in a meeting agenda. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because I chasing like simplicity. That. Yeah. I like simplicity because, I mean, we talk a lot like, I remember me and Carter talk sometimes, like politics is just them saying simple things in words that you can't <laughs> understand so you don't participate. So you don't know. <laughs> yeah, so you don't participate. But, like... I, I like breaking things down in the simplest format you that's digestible to. because then, you know, you could go do something with it. Yeah. So it's like SOP factor mm-hmm. is all about that. Like, does it matter if somebody's from scratch versus already operating a business? No. You go like get the idea, you know, that yeah. they want to pull out their head, yeah. whether they making money with it or not, and then put it in a a a, a Put it in a curriculum, right. put it on the Excel, put it mm-hmm. in a process, a checklist, one, two, three. Yep. So then now, okay, as the business owner, you might know what to do, but your business isn't going to grow unless you have a team. Right. You know, yep. so now if you have that training or that documentation for the team, you can scale much quicker, you can get yep. much stuff done, and it's less stress for you as a business owner. Yeah. I mean, know? and even for your other employees, right? So let, let's say... If you're just starting out, you're going to mm-hmm. follow someone someone else's blueprint, right? So if I want to develop houses, if I want to host, if I want to do what you're doing, mm-hmm. I'm going to follow your blueprint because it's working right mm-hmm. now. Exactly. I see it. I know what the numbers are. You I've see seen your business. I've seen the back of your business. Mm-hmm. I, I know that I can follow you, right? Mm-hmm. Now, I'm not going to have my own systems and processes up front. So I need to plug in with someone like you so that I can familiarize myself, see what pieces of your business I love. And which and ones then I work hate. out the kinks. Yeah, yeah. and what, maybe I don't want to do new build development. Mm-hmm. Maybe I do want to do it. Maybe that's the part of the business that I love the most. So you kind of just build out, and then eventually you have your own process. Yeah, right. Because you can't copy like you're, you're never something gonna. else. Every business, and like Apple and Microsoft. Yeah, you know it's the same. It's a computer. Thing. Yeah, it's a software. But they operate two different ways. Different processing systems. Mm-hmm. Different. Inputs, different outputs. Yeah. I mean, but at first you do have to follow somebody. A blueprint. You have to follow a a proven blueprint, right? Something that's sustainable that if you flew into Nashville right now, you could see it, Mm -hmm. right? It's not someone in a boardroom that just decided that they were going to do coaching today. Yeah. Right. Like then don't have no proof, nothing. They don't have anything documented. Mm -hmm. You can't follow it. Like Mm -hmm. that's not a blueprint. Mm -hmm. A blueprint is something that I can follow. Yeah. Right, like we're working right now on your internal training and stuff. Mm-hmm. Your team has been training other people every yes. time. Now we're pulling that person's skill set. Mm-hmm. Right, and that, putting it that's on paper. affecting. Yeah, but that's affecting our. If we're using, let's say, it's our transaction coordinator, and we're ready to bring on another one. If we already had the documentation for stuff, it'll be easier for us to continue to scale. Which you guys already had the SOP, but it's like, all right, let's take it a step further and document the the one to two minute questions that continue to pull us. Yeah. Right. When do I do that? How do I do that? 
the what, the why, and the how is what we're basically implementing on the back end so that when you hire another cold caller, instead of it being a seven day process, now we can do it in four days. Exactly. Like now we're more efficient. And then it's less, you know, of you getting away from the, the business. business to go, you know, pay attention to something that might be small. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? And so it's your I time. Like you're in there and like now it's not consistent. Even if you do decide that you want to do it live. Mm -hmm. Now it's not consistent because you don't remember what you told the first guy when you hired the first guy. Yeah. Now exactly. you're hiring the second guy and you don't remember what you need to tell him. I now learned you're my the lesson third with that one. I ain't going to lie, bro. I was training people, hiring people. You lose them and then you're like, damn, <laughs> I got to do this all over again. But, I mean, in this day and age with all this technology, it's like no excuse to not. Well, to be honest, you'll get left. Yeah. You know, if you're not back in 10, 15, 20 years ago, you don't have you didn't have to be as efficient. You know, running a business. You didn't. You know, and then... You could just show up, honestly. Because exactly. other people weren't showing up. But now it's like everyone is... With AI, you know, it's like near perfection, and, you and know? Yeah. I mean, you're talking about AI. You're talking about literally Google. Like, you can literally Google anything, right? Like, back in the day, we lived in this, like, small town mentality. Mm -hmm. Right? Oh, yeah, that's the person on 4th and Scott. Like, you know because you've driven by there. That's not where... We live like in a small corridor. Unless I'm looking for you, I'm not gonna find you. Yeah, nah, it's nah, it's crazy you said that because I read something the other day about London trying out these 15 minute cities, where like everything is within 15 minutes and like they have limits of this. Like you can't go outside of that 15 minute. You know, so it's like That's they're crazy. trying to shrink. Yeah. They're trying to have everyone living like, in their separate silos. Like, these are the groceries. Silos. These yeah. are your grocery stores. This is your thing. That's crazy. That sounds nah, that's really, weird. like, dangerous. Yeah, it do. I mean, <laughs> and then, you know, they, I just watched that movie, Ready Player One. You know, like, what? It, you seen that? No. I don't, I don't watch it. Like, they put the stuff. goggles on, and it's like... They're in a whole other world. Yeah. Yeah, that's crazy. I don't know. I don't like stuff like that. That's why you need I'm to get your money pray. right. That's why everybody need to <laughs> get their money pray. right. Get so your look, money right before, and pray. I, before I get you out of here, before I get you out of here, we touched on a lot of stuff from, you know, you getting into wholesaling. Um, of course, you know, getting the hustle from your parents, having that yeah. good example, getting into wholesaling, learning, you know, things in corporate, mm -hmm. and then building a portfolio up to 300 properties, then find out your property management company ain't was up, and then going in and having to, you know, learn you know, that system, yeah, how to manage that. And it started a new business from that. Oh, yeah. uh, what would you like to leave the people with? Like, you know, just any piece of advice because they probably like, damn. It's a lot. How I'm going to get, you know, like yeah. this is a lot that went down in Christina's uh, career. But if yeah. I'm at day one, yeah. you know, what 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 should they do? What should they do, yeah. you know, to get their journey started in I 2023? Mean, I think we're talking about something over, you know, nine years, 10 years, mm -hmm. right? Like, but everything starts with one again, right? It was one house. Yeah, exactly. It was one door knocking. It was one list. It was one event, right? Like you, we're so focused on how big something needs to be or like the long-term vision or all these other things that we fail to realize like it's one thing. It's mm. one action today, right? It's one commitment. Like it's I, one thing that you're doing. That's it. I agree because uh, I watched, uh, you ever seen Ed My Last Week? Mm -hmm. And he he talks about the power of yeah, one. Yeah, he has a book. Yeah, yeah. It is, it's simple, but it's like so you literally look at you your life. You only do one thing at a time, you know, and it builds up. Uh, like me, I'm always saying, win the day. Yeah. That's like my version of one. Yeah, you know, like let's just win the day, but one win, day at a time. But you, you know? also win one one thing at a time. Exactly. Right. So it's exactly. like you're winning, and like then you compound it, and now you're winning. Now you're winning the day. Mm hmm. And that's right, what people don't won, think you of. You won multiple little baby times. Mm -hmm. Now you win the day. Now you win the week. Now you win the month. Now you win the years. Now you win your life. And that's the journey. Yeah. That's the process. It's, it's it's in the everyday. So I would say just don't get so overwhelmed. Like, don't try to think of, I need to buy 100 houses. I need to buy 10. I need to buy 20. Focus on the one. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's the vision. But if I do this today, now I'm one less down. Yeah. Right? Whether my goal is 50, 100, a billion. You still got to do one thing. Like exactly. it's not, you're never gonna get here if you can't get if out of here. You keep thinking about exactly. You gotta and get out of here. Most of it is right here. Is that mindset? Is yeah. in your head? That's why I, I, I always love like you. Always focus on that part. It's like breaking the chains that we call it. Um, in the mastermind, we call it the prison cell, right? Like that's yeah. your prison cell. Yes. You're putting yourself there. Mm -hmm. You're so focused on something else when if you just focus on this, like on the one thing today, 
right? The, the connection, the call, the thing that you've been not wanting to do, whether it's a cold call yourself, whether it's the hire, whatever the thing is, you just have to do it one time. Yeah. And just then do it. Just do it. Yeah. And shit, I said, people hear me say this to the end of time, that first deal, $100 million, you know? Because it's that proof to you. It's that concept. And once your confidence get to a level where you know, it, it, yeah. you can't be stopped. You know, it's like before that first deal, you still got these thoughts in your mind. Like, is this for Skeptical. me? Then you get yeah. to it and it's like your proof of concept, your belief system just yeah. completely changed. I want to say one last thing before. Tell Because people, it. people, right, it's confidence, right? And it's mm -hmm. like, oh, I don't see that yet. Right? Yeah. Like confidence is something you develop over time. Mm -hmm. But what if I could borrow your confidence? Borrow belief. That's what I call that. Yeah. You know? That's I why coaching is so important. I can borrow your confidence, right? You're confident in new builds. Mm -hmm. I've never done a new build before. But if I'm going to do a new build, I'm, I'm going to be confident that you're going to support me and we're going to get this done. Mm -hmm. Because I've seen you do it before. Mm -hmm. Right? So whether it's a rent, you know, whether you're trying to build out a process, a coaching, whatever it is, like, it's like you, there's someone that's done it before, borrow their confidence, borrow their belief. Exactly. Like, even if you don't believe it right now. Even if you don't think it's possible for you, you can borrow that from someone else and make just use that. Exactly. I think that's what we all done. You know, that's why, you know, people talk about not reinvent reinventing mm -hmm. the wheel of uh, in your circle of people that you hang around. You around five dumbasses, you go be the sixth one. You around mm -hmm. five millionaires, you might be the sixth one. You know, They're you go get friends. some money. You go do something. If you don't, you they go kick, they go yeah, kick they you go, out. They go yeah, be like, you ain't gonna be around. Exactly. Like the mastermind. If yeah. somebody ain't doing what they gotta do. You're not going to get the Scottsdale invite. No. No. Yeah. Well. Amazing. I appreciate you for coming on here, Christina. Thank you. I you definitely, uh, I don't think we had a guest come on with a portfolio like yours. So uh, it was definitely a good perspective, you know, to just hear that you built it up one at a time. Because in my mind, when you, I knew you had, you know, a yeah. portfolio that large, but I'm like, she had to buy 50 at a time. Or, 100, 300 you know, people, exactly, like one apartment there. complex. And it wasn't that. And you got there pretty fast. Yeah, but it, so. started with, it started with one wholesale transaction. It That's started crazy. with one event. That's crazy. It wasn't, I didn't walk into that. You That's know? crazy. Yeah. That's crazy. But. Well, <laughs> that's you. all we got today on this show. This was an amazing episode. Tune in Monday at 7 p.m. Central Standard Time. Power of one. That's all I'm going to leave it with. <laughs> I ain't got too much else. We checking out. Thank you.